It's no secret Toriyama originally planned for Dragon Ball Super Superhero to be a Piccolo movie. The first two thirds of the movie make that apparent even after the script was altered to focus on Gohan for the climax. What that altered script didn't do was take away an important part of Piccolo's story. In a way, Giga Chad Piccolo over here completes the journey Piccolo has been on since the very beginning of Dragon Ball Z. Don't get ahead of yourself though. We have to discuss the journey that Piccolo has been on since the end of Dragon Ball. Originally, Piccolo was only seen as a one to one copy of his father, sharing the memories and even the physical attributes of the Demon King, who was also known as Piccolo. At the time of his introduction, he was, in essence, the incarnation of King Piccolo's vengeance. However, this new Piccolo was actually quite different from his previous incarnation, even when he's first introduced. Just think about it. For three years, he didn't cause any trouble as he waited for the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. After Goku won and let him live, the supposed Demon King just stayed in isolation for five more years. He was training to beat Goku, of course, but he wasn't doing any of the evil deeds his original would have carried out. Clearly, Piccolo was humbled by his loss, which allowed him to contemplate more on himself. Would the original Demon King really go into hiding or do nothing while Goku was training with Kami? Seems like a notable and purposeful change, especially after what we learn later. In early Dragon Ball Z, Piccolo still speaks as if he's entirely evil, but his edge has been dulled a bit. Despite being a harsh teacher at first, he clearly has concern for Gohan's well-being and even takes pity on Gohan during the survival training. Gohan later tells Piccolo that Goku doesn't think he's as bad as the original Demon King, basically confirming his actions in original Dragon Ball were intentionally out of character. Kami also notes that Piccolo is no longer evil enough to be classified as a demon since Raditz's soul was sent to the afterlife, rather than wandering the universe and torment the fate of those killed by demons. Side note, this actually means everyone killed by Piccolo's minions, Krillin included, were subjected to that fate as well. That actually explains no one talking about the afterlife, except for Roshi, I guess, who died using the Mafuba, but maybe it still counts as Piccolo's kill indirectly, like Guru was indirectly killed by Frieza on Namek. Anyway, some of you may be confused as to how this change started to happen, but it all leads back to Goku. Remember, Demon King Piccolo and Kami were once one. Piccolo is the evil that crept into the nameless Namekian by living on Earth and meeting malicious humans along the way. So the same can happen in reverse. Anyone that can ride the Kinto Un is pure of heart after all, so meeting people so pure of heart like Goku and even Gohan, Piccolo could lose his lust for revenge and even begin to become a good person. This all culminates in a moment that would come to define the direction of Piccolo's character, his sacrifice to protect Gohan. Even if he lied to himself that training Gohan and fighting alongside the humans was simply a means to an end, a necessary alliance to give him the chance for another battle with Goku and world domination, his sacrifice to protect the son of his mortal enemy can be seen as nothing other than a good deed. Earlier, Piccolo was aware his life would end soon, he even curses his own fate, not knowing if Kami would die of old age or he would die in battle. But neither half of the nameless Namekian could predict that it would be a choice. Not age, not an unwinnable conflict, but a choice for a man who was once evil to do good. This is only furthered by the fact that Piccolo is allowed to keep his body in the afterlife, most likely meaning he isn't being judged for the sins of his previous incarnation and is even being judged for the good of his actions against the Saiyans, including that character-defining sacrifice. There is definitely still an arrogance to him and even an evil nature below the surface, but Piccolo is clearly becoming a more nuanced and morally complex character than the Demon King ever was. Once Piccolo is revived and brought to Namek, a step in his journey is accomplished. This is the point where self-discovery and power start to go hand in hand. Piccolo had found out he was a Namekian from the Saiyans, something that was a surprise to both him and Kami. That immediately tells him what Kami already knew. He isn't a demon by birth or nature, nor is he purely the evil half of God. He's simply the corrupted half of a Namekian who split himself in two. Once Piccolo arrives on Namek, he immediately knows this is his home. For the first time in his life, he feels something of what it's like to be a Namekian. But even then, his goal remains to save Gohan above all else. No ulterior motives attached, except perhaps fighting Frieza to prove himself as a martial artist. This is a full departure from the way he pretended not to care about Gohan in the early Saiyan saga and the sole focus of world domination he was espousing as well. That's not the most interesting part though. It's when he merges with Nail that we start to piece Piccolo together. As is shown later on, when Piccolo calls Dende by name, Piccolo retains Nail's memories after they merge, even though he kept his own personality. 
If arriving on Namek was a taste of what it's like to be a Namekian, merging with Nail was the full meal. You see, this arc focuses a lot on heritage, as Goku takes up his own say in heritage, understanding not only the good, but the bad of his race, Piccolo gets a less fleshed out, yet similar experience via his merging with Nail. After receiving Nail's memories and being asked to fight for things that Nail wishes to protect, Piccolo's motives for fighting Frieza change. He's not fighting for just Gohan or his pride as a martial artist, he's carrying out not only Nail's will, but the will of all the Namekians who died in Frieza's invasion. Again, Goku does something similar later on, and just like Goku is rewarded for his character growth with the Super Saiyan transformation, this acceptance and understanding of Namekian heritage rewards Piccolo with power. As time passes after Namek and we get back to Earth, it should be no surprise that even with Nail's memories, Piccolo chooses to stay on the planet he knows as home rather than going to New Namek with the Namekians. Piccolo's family aren't the Namekians he only has someone else's memory of, it's his pupil, Gohan, the friend he's making in Goku, and the place his other half still remains. When the threat of the androids emerges, Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo train together, in very stark contrast to his hatred of Goku during their first encounter. This only pushes Piccolo further. He even rivals Super Saiyan Goku and Super Saiyan Vegeta in power now, but after the group loses to androids 17 and 18, a strange moment happens of Piccolo seemingly still retaining some of his evil. However, even Krillin can see through it. Obviously, Nail could never fully complete Piccolo. He's half a Namekian at the end of the day half of himself. That outburst proclaiming himself as still evil is less a regression and more a final act of defiance, knowing fully well that by doing what he's about to, he will never truly be his old self again. Of course, I'm referring to emerging with Kami and becoming the nameless Namekian once again, sort of. While Piccolo retains the dominant personality, this doesn't just give him power. Much like with Nail, Piccolo has Kami's memories as well, shown by Piccolo knowing that Goku used the Room of Spirit and Time as a child. Having Kami's memories completes his own life experiences in his mind, and it even gives him insights into the Dragon Clan side of being a Namekian. You see, Piccolo and Nail are both members of the Warrior Clan, the type of Namekians that are proficient in combat rather than their people's mystical abilities. Despite the nameless Namekian being sent to Earth as a child, Kami naturally moved to create the Dragon Balls, something exclusive to the Dragon Clan. The Dragon Balls were made after Kami and Piccolo split, something we know because the Demon King didn't know anything about them. So while merging with Kami the way he did keeps Piccolo solely a member of the Warrior Clan in terms of abilities, he learns what it is to be a member of the Dragon Clan, gaining further insight not only into himself, but a more complete image of what it is to be a Namekian. So with insight into both clans, memories of life on planet Namek, and a full reconciliation of his two halves, Piccolo has truly become a super Namekian, tapping into the natural potential he was born with rather than his wasted and fractured potential. And after that, Basically, nothing happens for a really long time. Piccolo is treated far less seriously in the Buu Saga, and in Dragon Ball Super, there are some attempts made to utilize him better, but they always seem to get undercut by the worst writing possible, like him dying in Resurrection F in the most bland way imaginable. Dragon Ball Super is beginning to redeem itself with Piccolo, though, and there was one final thing they could use to complete Piccolo. Despite Dende being brought to Earth and made the new god of the planet, the Dragon Balls and Shenron himself are still Kami's creations. The statue was made by Popo, but Kami is the one who breathed life into Shenron initially. So as happened when Guru passed down Purunga to Elder Mori after his death, so too were Kami's Dragon Balls and Shenron passed on to Dende. And that's where the new movie comes in. In Dragon Ball Super Superhero, Piccolo is constantly referred to as the Demon King by the Gammas or even Kami by Master Karin. But he keeps reminding everyone he is simply Piccolo now. The movie isn't doing this for fun, it's constantly reminding us of his roots intentionally. Later in the film, he wishes for his potential to be unlocked by Shenron, the same process Grand Elder Guru did for Gohan and Krillin. Side note, Elder Guru actually does it for Dende as well, but then they just doesn't mention it in the movie for some reason. At the end of the day, this process is simply a realization of Piccolo's own potential, something we've seen many times throughout the series. But while Piccolo and Shenron talk about the wish, Shenron continues to talk to Piccolo respectfully, calling him Piccolo-sama, basically Lord Piccolo. Like everyone else in the film, 
he's acknowledging Piccolo's origin. He understands that Piccolo is his original creator. What's important is what Shenron does after the initial potential unlock. He adds in something extra for Piccolo. Later in the film, this power manifests itself as Orange Piccolo, a transformation that gives him power on top of his own latent potential, power directly derived from Shenron. You see, for Shenron to unlock Piccolo's potential, he had to be upgraded by Dende. Unlike the time Dende added more wishes to Shenron, this time Dende's upgrade completely changed Shenron's statue. This is the moment where Shenron truly becomes Dende's dragon. An excellent moment for him, but for Piccolo, it's something else. In a way, Orange Piccolo is the life he bestowed in his own creation, returning home in the form of power. Piccolo has, in a way, been completed. The Demon King, the Warrior, the God, and now the Dragon. An important thing to note is the lore of the Dragon Balls. In Dragon Ball Super, the Namekians treat the Dragon Balls as a sort of religion. They pray to them, seeking their protection in times of crisis, and even treat collecting them as a journey of self-worth and a judgment of one's character or intentions. In the Moro arc, very minor manga spoilers ahead, really it's nothing, the Namekians are protected by their Dragon Balls and by extension Purunga, despite no wish being made in that time. Orange Piccolo is similar in a way. This is the Namekians' reverence and reliance on the Dragon Balls culturally being manifested. Just look at the colors of Orange Piccolo. He's orange with red accents, just like the Dragon Balls themselves. To go further on the actual design of the form, there's a symbol that appears on his back and it's more important than you realize. A circle completes itself and within it, a Namekian tree, the Ajisa tree, fully blooms within. As described in the novel version of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, this symbol represents Namekian pride, which makes perfect sense for Piccolo at this point in his journey. After receiving his heritage from Nail, becoming whole again with Kami, and having life he granted to his own creation return to him as power with Shenron, Piccolo's own circle is complete, and he has blossomed, like the Ajisa tree on his back, into a completed Namekian end character. From Demon King to Loving Uncle, this is the story of the Namekian that calls Earth home, Piccolo. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and thank you so very much for watching.